Good evening, brethren. I hope that you are well in the Lord. We are going to study about calamities and blue laws. And we are going to say that uh, for Bible-believing Christians or for Bible-believing uh, uh, students, it is that if we read through the Bible, then we'll get that there is a decided connection between calamities and uh, worship. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you this wonderful evening. We thank you for being with us. We don't look upon any other power but the power from above and God. May you constrain our hearts, may you strengthen our hearts, Heavenly Father, so that we may be able to reach out unto your hand of salvation, Heavenly God. We pray, Heavenly God, that may you each and every day open our minds and our understanding, Heavenly God. As we seek an understanding of your word, Heavenly Father, we pray, Father God, that let us be of understanding, Heavenly Father, and be wise, Heavenly Father, to discern, to discern the signs of the times, Heavenly God. As we are going to study this evening, we pray that may you lead us into all and nothing but the truth, Heavenly God. As we compare Scripture with Scripture, Heavenly Father, we pray, Father God, that may you establish us in nothing else but in the truth. All this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Yeah, we are studying about calamities and uh, blue and and blue laws, and in our study about calamities and blue laws, we'll go to the book of Job, chapter number one. In Job chapter number one, from verse number six, it says, "Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them, and the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. Verse number 8, And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and eschewth evil? And actually, here it gives us the definition of a perfect and an, and a, and an upright man. He says, uh, has thou considered my servant Job? It also gives us a description of uh, a servant of God. Uh, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man. So a servant of God and a man of God or a woman of God or a child of God or is, is someone who is perfect, is someone who is upright, is someone who feareth God, is someone who eschewth evil. Verse number 9. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Has not thou made an hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hand, and his substance is increased in the land. Verse 11, But put forth thine hand now, and touch all that he hath, and he will cast thee to thy face. The devil is saying that if the Lord puts his hand and touches all that Job has, then Job will cast him to his face. And we know that when Job casts him to his face, our love cannot be divided. Is it that we love God or we are for the devil? Is it that we are, we are for God or we are against him? Is it that we are for the devil or we are against him? So when he says that touch all that he has and he will, he will cast thee, what he is saying is that these calamities that he uh, that Satan uh, uh, used to afflict Job, he, he expected that these calamities would uh, uh, shift his allegiance from God to, 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 to the devil. That's why he says, but put forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath and he will cast thee to thy face. Verse number 12, and the Lord said unto Satan, behold, all that he hath is in thy power and upon himself uh, and upon and uh, um, let us take that again. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon himself put not thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. What did he go to do? Verse number 13. Satan afflicts Job. And if you continue from verse number 13 uh, to verse number 19, we see that he brings calamities. For example, in verse 13 he says, And there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in the eldest brother's house. Verse 14, And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the asses feeding besides them, and the Sabaeans fell upon them and took them away. If you continue to read verse number 17, it says, While he was speaking, there came also another and said, The Chaldeans made out three bands and fell upon the camels and have carried them 
away, yea, and slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped to tell thee. Verse 18, while he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in the eldest brother's house. Verse 19, and behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house, and it fell upon the young men, and they are dead, and I only am escaped to tell thee. We see calamities in the life of Job, but we have established in verse number 11 and in the conversation that was between uh, the devil and God in verse from verse number 6, is that these calamities, they were a test of faith, uh, uh, of the faith of, of Job. These calamities, they were a test of the faith of Job. They were going to test where his allegiance was, but Job amidst all these calamities, he remained true to his God. He remained loyal to his God. He remained faithful to his God. And in this area that Job was able to manage to overcome, very many will not be able, have not been able to overcome. At a time of calamity, very many have left their allegiance to God and shifted their allegiance to the evil one because of, of, of worldly comforts, because of, because of ease. So here we see, one thing that we find here is that the devil is the one who brought calamities. Don't forget that. The devil brought calamities because remember from verse number 6, we, we see that Satan obtains permission to afflict Job. Then Satan brings calamities. But one thing we find here, if you read in the book Welfare Ministry, it says this, uh, that it was generally believed by the Jews that sin is punished in this life. Every affliction was regarded as the penalty uh, of some wrongdoing, either of the sufferer himself or his parents. It is true that all suffering results from the transgression of God's law, but this truth had become perverted. This truth had become perverted. Why had it become perverted? Because of the evil one. So we see, we see that he brought calamities, but also he also brought a mind, uh, a mind which would pervert the true, uh, the true, uh, the true happenings. It says, Satan, the author of sin and all its results, and all its results, had led men to look upon disease and death as proceeding from God. Now we see the perversion is that these Jews they gave their minds to the evil one who perverted the real happening and made them believe that all these things happened because uh, uh, certain the author of sins and all its results had led men to look upon disease and death as proceeding from God, as punishment arbitrarily afflict, inflicted on account of sin. Hence, one upon whom some great affliction or calamity had fallen had the additional burden of being regarded as a great sinner. Now we see the kind of perversion that the devil brings when, whenever there's, there's a calamity. And one thing that we can agree with is that in the land today there is a calamity and if the devil has always been fond of bringing perversions whenever there is a calamity if it has always been the interest of the evil one to misrepresent calamities and give some misrepresentation to achieve his own end then brethren we believe that as the, at this time while the world is facing calamities while the world is facing troubles that the devil will go to the same ends to bring a perversion to the calamities so that he can achieve the same end as some 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 end and what is this end we see that there's if you go back to prophetic history or sacred history, we will see that there is a close connection between calamities and the blue laws. We will understand that now, number one, let us first understand what the blue laws are. What are blue laws? So that is that is the question because we are saying about calamities and blue laws. Now, this uh, article asks, what are blue laws? Now, you can go back to history and find this. It says, have you ever heard of a blue law? The term was first used back in 1755. It is legislation that prohibits or restricts certain activities in order to support religious standards. So these are laws that are used to support some religious uh, standards. Then it continues, in rare instances, blue laws affect activities on days other than Sunday. Highlight that, that in rare instances, in rare instances, blue laws affect activities on days other than Sunday. You can go back to history and read about blue laws. But the most common use is in reference to Sunday, in which case they are known as Sunday laws. So we say that uh, a blue laws, what we, what we find here is that uh, blue laws are also known as Sunday laws. Blue laws are also known as Sunday laws because they are majorly attached to, 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 to Sunday. It continues uh, to say this. It continues to say this that uh, colonial America, colonial America observed Sunday as a day of rest in the 18th century as well and established laws governing its observance. 
they establish laws governing the observance of what? The observance of Sunday. Mm -hmm. Don't forget that. Go and confirm in history. It says, these laws carried over as the new country was formed. Within 12 years of the framing of the constitution, many states had Sunday laws in effect that outlawed working. In effect, Sunday laws that did what? Many states had Sunday laws in effect that outlawed working, traveling, and selling goods on that day. Soon, Sunday laws were added to prohibit the selling of alcoholic beverages on Sunday. Interesting. Just, just highlight what, what, what the intention of the blue laws were. Now, we are asked again, uh, what about blue laws today? Now, this article uh, answers and says, since that time, as our culture has grown more secular, Sunday laws have lost popularity and have faced opposition, and hundreds of Sunday laws in various states have been repealed, yet many of them still exist. Often, when challenged, they are upheld as constitutional. Don't forget that. They are upheld as constitutional because there is a supposed secular as well as religious purpose behind them. So here we find that uh, behind Sunday laws or behind blue laws, there is a supposed secular or religious purpose behind them. And remember, we had said calamities and blue laws, and we have seen from the experience of Job that the devil brought calamities, then he brought a perversion. And in the world today, it is evident to each and everyone that there is a calamity in, 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 the, in, the, in the land. And because that has always been the character of the devil, he will also pervert the interpretation of these calamities so that he can be able to achieve his end. Now let us read from Manuscript Releases, volume, volume 10. Uh, let us go to Manuscript Releases, Volume 10, it says this in Manuscript Releases, Volume 10, Manuscript Releases, Volume 10 says this, uh, this is Volume 10 of Manuscript Releases, page 239, talking about the devil and his, uh, his devices. Remember, we have always been told to be careful, to be not to be, not to be ignorant of the devil and his devices. It says, Satan puts his interpretation, uh, sorry, mm, yeah, S uh, uh, volume 10 of manuscript releases says Satan puts his interpretation upon events and they think as he will have them so upon events it is the character of Satan to put his interpretation then many will think as he will have them that calamities which fill the land as are, are as a result of Sunday breaking mm -hmm. are we seeing that he says Satan puts his interpretation upon events and they think as he will have them that calamities which fill the the, the land are as a result of Sunday breaking. So, brethren, what are we saying? What we are seeing here is that from sacred history, we are from the spirit of prophecy, we are told that it is the character of the devil to bring calamities. And after he has brought calamities, he will make men think as he would. And he will say that these calamities are in the land as a result of Sunday breaking. Do you get the picture? We continue. In manuscript releases, it continues to, to say this. It continues to say that thinking to appease the wrath of God, these influential men make laws enforcing Sunday observance. Just remember what you have read about blue laws. Just go back and remember what you have, we have read about blue laws. It says thinking to appease the wrath of God, these influential men make laws enforcing Sunday observance. They think that by exalting this false day, false rest day, higher and still higher, Compelling obedience to the Sunday law, the spurious Sabbath, they are doing God's service. Now, these are people who are deluded because they think that they are doing God's service while, not, while they are not doing God's service. He says, those who honor God by observing the true Sabbath are looked upon as disloyal. Now you see the problem that comes here. You see the conflict that comes along with, with, uh, with blue laws. He says, those who honor God by observing the true Sabbath are looked upon as disloyal to God. Why? Because they are those who honor the, 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 the spurious Sabbath and they look upon those who honor the true Sabbath as disloyal to God. Then he says, when it is really those who thus regard them who are themselves disloyal because they are trampling, because they are doing what? Because they are trampling underfoot the Sabbath originated in heaven. And when we talk about the Sabbath originated in heaven, we are talking about the Saturday Sabbath as can be proved from the word of God. So brethren, we have seen that the devil will always bring calamities. We can see that principle in the life of Job. After he has brought calamities, he will put a misrepresentation in the, in the calamities and will say that we are having these calamities because people are breaking uh, the Sunday Sabbath. Now, let us uh, go back to the great controversy and continue to look at the character of the evil one. Let us read the great controversy and look at the character of the evil one. 
Now, a speech of prophecy says this about uh, the devil. It says, through spiritualism, Satan appears as a benefactor of the race, healing the diseases of the people and professing to present a new and more exalting, uh, exalted system of religious faith. It says, through spiritualism, Satan appears as a benefactor of the race, healing the diseases of the people and professing to present a new and more exalted system of religious faith. But at the same time, what does he do? But at the same time, he works as a destroyer. Mm -hmm. So attached to this exalted and false religious system, behind that he works as a destroyer. It continues, his temptations are leading multitudes to ruin. Intemperance dethrones reason, sensual indulgence, strife, and bloodshed follow. Satan delights in war. So whenever we see war, let us know that Satan delights in war. Why? For it excites the worst passions of the soul and then sweeps into eternity its victims steeped in vice and blood. It is his object to incite the nations to war against one another, for he can thus divide the minds of the people from the work of preparation to stand in the day of God. That is why he excites in war. That's why he excites in calamity. That's why he excites in, 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 in violence and strife. It continues and says, Satan works through elements through the elements also to garner his harvest of unprepared soul. He has studied the secret the secrets of the laboratories of nature and he uses all his power to control the elements as far as God allows. Remember the case of Job. Then he says when he was suffered to afflict Job how quickly flocks and herds servants, houses, children were swept away, one trouble succeeding another as in a moment. It is God that shields his creatures and hedges them in from the power of the destroyer but the Christian world have shown contempt for the law of Jehovah and the Lord will do just what he has declared that he would. He will withdraw his blessings from the earth and remove his protecting care from those who are rebelling against his law and teaching and forcing others to do the same. Then what about Satan? Satan has control of all whom God does not especially guard. He will favor and prosper some in order to further his own designs. Who? The devil. What will he do? He will favor some and prosper some in order to do what? In order to further his own designs. If we digress a bit, who, who has favored you? Under whose favor are you walking? Is it under the favor of God or under the favor of the, of the evil one? And remember when the devil prospers you, he prospers you so that he can advance some of his designs. How do we know who favors you? To the law and to the testimony. You test everything by the by the by the by the word of God. You are reading great controversy. Uh, so we have seen here that Satan will favor some, will favor some and prosper some in order to further his own designs, and he will bring trouble upon others and lead men to believe that it is God who is afflicting them. Look what the spirit of prophecy says. The devil bringing misinterpretations. What will he do? He will bring trouble upon others and lead men to believe that it is God who is inflicting them. For example, now, what this means that if the devil brings a pandemic, because we have seen that it is the work of the devil to bring, uh, it is the devil who brings calamities. When the devil brings a pandemic, when the devil brings an epidemic, he will misrepresent and will say that these pandemics, these epidemics are on the land because, because, because men are doing what? Let us just read great controversy so that we don't paraphrase. What will he, what will he say when he brings problems? He says he will favor and prosper some. Uh, we have seen here that he will bring disease and disaster until popular cities, uh, just a minute before we go there, Satan has control of all whom God does not especially guard. He will favor and prosper some in order to further his own designs, and he will bring trouble upon others and lead men to believe that it is God who is afflicting them. Just remember what we, we read about uh, the account of Job. Then it continues about the devil. It says, while appearing to the children of men as a great physician who can heal all their maladies, he will bring disease and disasters. Who? The devil. Do we see disease in the land? Yes. Do we see disaster in the land? Yes. He says he will bring disease and disasters until popular cities are reduced to ruin and desolation. Even now he's at work in accidents and calamities by sea and by land. Do we see calamities in the land? Yes. Do we see calamities in the sea? Yes. It says in great conflagrations, in fierce tornadoes and terrific hailstorms, hailstorms, in tempests, floods, cyclones, tidal waves and earthquakes, in every place and in a thousand forms, Satan is exercising his power. So whenever you see calamities, whenever you see disease, whenever you see disasters, whenever you see cities being reduced to ruin in, in pandemics and epidemics and in uh, and whenever you see desolation 
And we are being told that even now he's at work. Just open your primetime news and you'll confirm that even now he's at work. Satan is exercising his power. Then he says, he sweeps away the ripening harvest and famine and distress follow. He imparts to the air a deadly taint and thousands perish by pestilence. These visitations are to become more and more frequent and disastrous. Highlight that. These visitations are to become more and more frequent and disastrous. Then it continues, destruction will be upon both man and beast. The earth moaneth and faileth away. The haughty people do languish. The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof, because they have transgressed the laws of God, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. That is Isaiah 24, verse number 4 to 5. Then, what will the great de deceiver do? He says, and then the great deceiver will persuade men that those who serve God are causing this evil. What will he do? He will misrepresent. I will bring calamities, then he will misrepresent. Then he says, he says that, and the great deceiver will persuade men that those who serve God are causing this evil. The class that have provoked the displeasure of heaven will charge all their troubles upon the, whose obedience to God's commandment is a perpetual reproof to the transgressor, transgressors. It will be declared that men are offending God by violating the Sunday Sabbath. Look at what the spirit of, of prophecy says, that there will be calamities. Then when these calamities are in the land, it will be declared, who will declare? The devil will influence men to declare it will be de declared that men are offending God by violation of Sunday Sabbath. That's why we are talking about uh, calamities and the, and the blue laws. Because from the spirit of prophecy, we have seen a principle that the devil will bring calamities. Then after he has brought calamities, he will say that these calamities are in the land because men are breaking the spurious Sabbath. So if he wants to push men to keep the spurious Sabbath, what will the devil do? He will bring calamities. And when people will seek arrest from, from the troubles that are brought by the calamities, he will tell them that if you want the calamities to, 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 uh, uh, to, be, to, uh, to, to, to come down, then we must go back to the spurious Sabbath. Great controversy. It continues uh, to read this. He says, it will be declared that men are offending God by violation of the Sunday Sabbath, that this sin has brought calamities which will not cease until Sunday observance shall be strictly enforced. That's why we are talking about calamities and blue laws. And we, had, we defined blue laws and we saw how they are, they are also called Sunday laws. And that those who present the claims of the fourth commandment are thus destroying reverence for Sunday, are troublers of the people, preventing the restoration of divine favor and temporal prosperity. So he will bring calamities after he has brought calamities. And whenever there is calamities, people will, 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 will require restoration. People will need restoration. People will, 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 will claim restoration. People will even protest for restoration and divine favor and temporal prosperity for there to be to be restoration for there to be temporal prosperities the uh, the calamities must cease so the devil will say that for the calamities to cease what must we do we had just read here uh, it will be declared it will be declared that men are offending God by the violation of the Sunday Sabbath that this sin has brought calamities which will not cease until Sunday observance shall be strictly enforced and that those who present the claims of the fourth commandment which is the Sabbath the, the Sunday Sabbath thus destroying reverence for Sunday are troublers of the people preventing their, their restoration to divine favor and temporal prosperity thus the accusation urged of all against the servant of God will be repeated upon grounds equally well established that is the book of first Kings chapter 18 to verse Number 17 to 18, which reads, And it came to pass when Ab saw Elijah, that Ab said unto him, Art thou the troubler? Art thou he that troubleth Israel? And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house, in that ye have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast followed Baalim. Then, Great Controversy, uh, we were reading Great Controversy, chapter 36. Uh, it says, It finishes this and says, As the wrath of the people shall be excited by false charges, I light again, false charges. These false charges, he says, as the wrath of the people shall be excited by false char charges, they will pursue a course towards God's ambassadors, very similar to that which apostate Israel pursued towards Elijah. So we have seen that there is calamities in the land, and we have seen the, the, the motive behind these calamities. And we see that wherever there is calamities, if you go back to, uh, to sacred history, you'll find that the devil will bring calamity. After he has brought calamities, he will bring false charges, he will misrepresent, he will, he will lie, so that he can push people to call for a temporal prosperity, to call for a cessation of these calamities. Then he will point them to an idol Sabbath, which is contrary to the true Sabbath that the Lord gave us in his ten commandments. So, brethren, uh, let us... Uh, 
Uh, so let us repeat manuscript releases. Remember what we had yesterday, then we go uh, to some articles. That Saturn puts his interpretation upon events, and they think as he will have them, that the calamities which fill the land as a result of Sunday breaking, that the calamities are as a result of Sunday breaking. Thinking to appease the wrath of God, these influential men make laws enforcing Sunday observance. And make laws enforcing Sunday observance. They think that by exalting this false rest day, higher and still higher, compelling obedience to Sunday law, the spurious Sabbath, they are doing God's service. So let us go to some, some articles and look, is there a movement that is calling for, for, for Sunday observance? Is there a movement that is calling for arrest? Ar arrest? Is there a mo are there movements in the land that are calling for people to rest because they, 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 they say that, 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 that the calamities have brought so much trouble in the land that people need, need to go back and rest? But on which day will they rest? Will it be on the true Sabbath or on the spurious Sabbath. So let us the, let us look at the at the Sunday movement in the across 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 the globe. We had looked at uh, the blue laws, and we are studying about calamities and blue laws. Now just look at this. I'll uh, just look at this. Last time we had read from last day events that the Sunday law is making its way in, in, in darkness. Some are concealing the true issue. While some might be honest in doing in, in pushing for, for, for Sunday rest, some are, are deluded and some do not know where whether the undercurrent is tending. It says Peru reimposes Sunday curfews to stop virus spike. Uh, a virus has been brought has brought a calamity. Then what do they do? They they need a Sunday, a Sunday curfew. Why not other day? Go back to what we have just read. It says, Peru will reimpose a ban on people leaving their homes on Sundays and outlaw family parties in an effort to, gap, to curb its resurgent coronavirus outbreak. Then it, con it continues and says this, that we have to take a step back in the measures we were relaxing. Uh, we were relaxing. From this Sunday, the mandatory curfew will return on a national level. So, Breton, if you go, if you go across... If you go and, and look at uh, at what is happening in the world, you'll find that uh, there's there's a movement which is calling for for a rest, and this rest is hinged on the spurious Sabbath. This hinge, this rest is hinged on the spurious Sabbath. Let us go back and look at uh, some other articles. Also, uh, this is uh, uh, this is the the recorder. Let us look at what uh, this article says. It talks about what does it talk about? It talks about faith matters, creating a day of rest. When 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 was this? This is uh, 2020. And what what about Peru? Peru. This is uh, let us look at the date. This is uh, 13th uh, August 2020. What about the the recorder? Which which year is this? This is uh, 31st July 2020. Now what do they say? It says during during quarantine, what brings about quarantine and physical distancing and antiviral protocols a calamity. Uh, it, it says, sorry, let's just go back. Mm -hmm. Let's just go back. Yes, there. It says during during quarantine. It says during quarantine, physical distancing and antiviral protocols, we are forced to stay connected via internet. Mm, so what brings this discussion? It is a calamity. How do we know? Quarantine, physical distancing, and anti antiviral protocols. Uh, it continues after reading many articles on this topic. Which topic? Just go and read uh, this article and uh, the, the the preceding uh, uh, paragraphs. It says after reading many articles on this topic about 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 arrest. Yeah, it's about about arrest. That is that is the topic. A need for arrest. He says, after reading many articles on this topic, I realized that we need to return to the tradition of having a Sabbath. The article says that we need to return to the tradition of having a what? A Sabbath. Sabbath also uh, spelled uh, Sabbath comes from Hebrew sh uh, Shabbat, which means day of rest. So he says, after reading uh, about articles on rest, we need to return to a day of rest. But look at what this article brings out. Look at, there's something interesting that this article brings out. Uh, it says, in fact, it says, in fact, until recently, people worldwide participated in periods of rest, that is after calling for rest, from their daily cause and duties. Then it says, here in the U.S., where there were blue laws, work was suspended on Sundays. Work was suspended on Sundays. It says, here in the U.S., when, where, uh, when there were blue laws, Work was suspended on Sundays. It says, 
Sunday was time for church, family, and rest of minds, bodies, and spirits. When the blue laws were rescinded, many people used the weekends to shop, play sports, and relax with loved ones. As a result, the church attendance dropped. As a result, the church attendance dropped. When the blue laws were removed, what happened? Church attendance dropped. For you to now have church attendance, what will you need? You will need blue laws. But for us, to, for people to need to, demand, uh, to, to need for blue laws, the devil knows that he, he should bring calamities. And when he brings calamities, he will convince people that these calamities are there because we are not we are not spiritual in quotes. We are not spiritual in quotes. For us to do away the calamities, let us go back to God. Let us go to back to God. And remember, when we talk about going back to God, He is leading them to a fall, a spurious Sabbath, a spurious Sabbath. So this article. Uh, says here, it says that Sunday was time for church, family, and rest of minds, bodies, and spirits. When the blue laws were rescinded, many people used the weekends to shop, uh, play sports, and relax with loved ones. As a result, church attendance dropped. Some people still attended church services, but only for an hour or so. Then it was back to business as usual. Many people no longer have a designated time for resting. Many people do not have a designated time for resting. There's nothing wrong in resting, but how, how is your rest? What is the nature of a rest? If, we, if, it is, if it is a Sabbath, which Sabbath? Is it the true Sabbath or a false Sabbath? It says... We should, we should reconsider reviving this tradition of a Sabbath. First, this respite improves our health. We need to rest our minds, get outside, even if we can only go into our own yard and move our bodies. In doing so, we create time, uh, we create time to connect to the divine, however we imagine. For those with no faith path, there are many ways to create our own day of rest. And it continues and continues and continues. You can, you can go and read. So even uh, from articles, people are saying that we need a rest. But on which rest are we talking about? Is it rest that is founded on the word of God? Or is it rest that is founded on the commandments of men? And the article has talked about blue laws. But let us just go back and see what we had said about, about blue laws. Uh, we had said about blue laws, we had, we had read from this article that uh, have you ever heard of a blue law? The term was first used back in 1755. It is, what is, what is it? It is legislation that prohibits or restricts certain activities in order to support religious standards. So the devil will bring calamities. After he has brought calamities, he will convince men that we need we need we need laws that will restrict and support religious standards. In rare instances, blue laws affect activities on on days other than Sunday. But the most common use is in reference to Sunday. So blue laws, the most common use is in reference to what Sunday. Now let us look at some of the some of the laws that are being put, and let us look in reference to which day they are in reference to which day. Now, which article is this? This is the Catholic Herald. When August 11th, 2020, it says, Why we must remember the Sabbath. Which Sabbath? Let us read and see. It says, The UK may have left the EU, but the next month, the next month, a little slice of England may age that, that bit closer to Catholic Europe. That is a, a bullet point. It says, The UK may have left EU, but next month, a little slice of England may age that bit closer to Catholic Europe. We'll, we'll study that sometime into detail to see why it's a bullet point. It says, Councillors from Hampshire, where I live, will deliberate on whether to ban lorries from driving in the county on a Sunday. What are they deliberating on? On whether to ban lorries from driving in the county on a Sunday. He says, if they do so, this part of southern England will join Germany, Austria. Look at these countries. Will join Germany, Austria, Hungary, Slovakia, and other parts of what has was the Lo Holy Roman Empire in burning HGV. HGV means heavy good vehicles, movement on Sabbath. Remember what we read about blue laws. What was the intention of blue laws? Just remember here. Uh, just remember what... Uh, uh, blue blue laws uh, used to to do. Uh, it says. Colonial America observed Sunday law as a day of rest in the 18th century, as well and established laws governing its observance. These laws carried over as the new country was formed. Within 12 years of the framing of the Constitution, many states had Sunday laws in effect that would, that outlawed what? Working. What did they outlaw? Working. What did they outlaw? Traveling. What did they outlaw? selling of goods on that day. Soon laws were added to prohibit the selling of alcoholic beverages on Sunday. Just look at what we have read. Is it similar to what we what the blue laws was? It says 
uh, councillors from Hampshire, where I live, will deliberate on whether to ban lorries from driving in the county on a Sunday. If they do so, this part of southern England will join Germany, Austria, Hungary, Slovakia, and other parts of what was the Holy Roman Empire in burning HGV movements. But do these things happen in these nations that have been mentioned here? Let us go to traffic. Traffic. Uh, this is truck parking in Europe. The article is truck parking in Europe. Now look at the traffic uh, traffic ban bans for trucks in 2020. It says. In 2020, there will again be various truck bans in Europe. When? 2020. In this article, we list the largest traffic bans. First, we name the general traffic bans, and then you see all traffic bans in Europe per month. Put them in your agenda and keep following us uh, so you won't miss. Uh, okay, that is that. It says general traffic bans in Europe. Now, general traffic bans, remember blue laws, what they used to do. Remember what they banned, traveling, traffic bans. It says general traffic bans. And remember, we saw, we saw that there's... In, in as much as there's a civil, in as much as there's a civil, uh, a civil connotation to these blue laws, there's also a spiritual connotation. That's why we have said that in as much as some may only see the civil connotation of these blue laws, there's a spiritual aspect of it. And who is interested in utilizing the spiritual aspect of these blue laws? The evil one, because he also seeks to be worshipped the way God was worshipped. And if God had a Sabbath, he also seeks a Sabbath, but a spurious one. So it says, uh, it, talk, it is talking about uh, uh, traffic bans in, 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 in Europe, general traffic bans in, in Austria. Look at the pattern here. And remember what we read about blue laws. It says, in Austria, traffic bans apply on all roads on Saturdays, mm -hmm, between those hours, and on Sundays. So there are traffic bans on Saturdays and on Sundays. This is in Austria. Uh, in in, in, in uh, Belarus, look at uh, another day. Look at the days that... Co uh, uh, that appears mostly in these in these bands uh in in, in belarus mm -hmm, there's uh this prohibition applies to all always where the temperature is uh that uh general traffic bans in zek republic in zek republic you're not allowed to drive on main roads or motorways on sundays that is in zek republic in france from saturday in this uh in during these hours to sunday during these hours sunday has been mentioned again General traffic bans in Germany every Sunday. There is a traffic ban in Germany every Sunday. There is a traffic ban in Germany. That is interesting. A traffic bans in, in Hungary. It says from Saturday uh, at these hours to Sunday at these hours. Sunday again. General traffic bans in Italy. In Italy, you are not allowed to drive on Sundays in a vehicle exceeding uh, those those turns. Uh, August, September, and it continues on. So, but in Italy, they are, they are, they are, they are trading bans. This, but we are looking at traffic bans. Go and look for, go and look in the articles. They are trading bans again Sunday. Then it says general traffic bans again here. Which day? Uh, a traffic ban applies to all roads every Sunday. Why Sunday? Just go at, at the foundation that we had established. General traffic bans again here. It says uh, Saturday here. Uh, uh, again. On Saturdays to these hours and on Sundays. Then general traffic ban on Sundays in Slovenia on Sundays. Brethren, Sunday, 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 Sunday. So while there's a regard for rest on Sunday, while there's a movement for curfews on Sundays, who is interested to utilize this or to push his own designs behind this? Is evil and why? Because he also seeks to be worshipped the way God is worshipped. God had his Sabbath, which is clearly uh, uh, brought out in the Ten Commandments. But because so he also seeks to be worshipped the way God is worshipped, he came up with a spurious Sabbath, which is nowhere, cannot be proved from the word of God. And as we had read, that he will bring calamities. So while we see a push for, 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 for the spurious Sabbath in the land, and while we see calamities in the land, what we are saying is that it brings a fertile ground for the devil to achieve his end. And when he brings a fertile ground for the devil to achieve his end, what will happen? There are people who will be put into a conflict. And who are they? Those who keep the true Sabbath. Brethren, final events will be rapid ones. Final events will be rapid ones. So let us go back to, uh, to let us go back to uh, look at uh, this. So we have seen these traffic traffic bans and other. This talks about other traffic bans in Europe, traffic bans in April, and we just go and read this article. This is uh, tracking. This is tracking Europe. 
uh, truck parking Europe, truck parking Europe under the under the traffic bans in 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 Europe. Remember, we have only talked about traffic bans. We have not talked about trade trading bans. There 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 are numerous there are numerous bans on 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 this day on the on the first day of of the week. Why are we studying this? That is the question now. We have laid the foundation. Why are we studying this? In the words of Jesus, he tells us something in the book of uh, Exodus, not Exodus, in the book of Luke chapter 17, from verse number 26, he says, And as it was the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. The people who lived during the time of Noah, they did not discern the signs of the times until the day that Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Now let us look at the sacred history of the antediluvian world. We'll do that by reading the Pachecks and Prophets and, and highlight on the sacred history of the antediluvian world. This is the antediluvian world during the days of Noah. It says, On the vast population of the earth before the flood, only eight souls believed and obeyed God's word through Noah. How many? Only eight souls believed and obeyed God's word through Noah. We are seeing calamities in the land. We are seeing the Sunday movement making its way in darkness. While we are being told where this, while, while, while through the word of God, we, we have been told, while through prophecy, we have been told where this current is standing. There are very many who still don't want to believe the word of God and know that we are entering a time of trouble that has uh, that has never been. Uh, Patrick and Prophet says this. Uh, he says, remember we have said as it was in the days of Lot. He says, of the vast population of the earth before the flood, only eight souls believed and obeyed God's word through Noah. For 120 years, the preacher of righteousness warned the world of the coming destruction. But this message was rejected and despised. There were very many people still reject and despise the warning of, a, of, a, of the impending conflict. He says, so... It will be now, before the lawgiver shall come to punish the disobedient. Transgressors are wont to repent and return to their allegiance. But with the majority, these warnings will be in vain, says Apostle Peter. There shall come in the last days coffers walking after their own lusts and saying, Where is the promise of his, of, his, of his coming? Since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning. That is 2 Peter chapter 3, from verse 3 to 4. Do we not hear these very words repeated? Not merely by the openly godly, but by many who occupy pulpits of our land, not the ungodly, not the heaven-daring sinner alone who, who, who scoffs, but even those who occupy pulpits in our land. He says, they say, there's no cause for alarm. They cry, before Christ shall come, all the world is to be converted. The righteous is to reign. Uh, the righteousness and, he, and righteousness is to reign for a thousand years. Let us take that again. Before Christ shall come, they say, before Christ shall come, all the world is to be converted, and the righteousness is to reign for a thousand years. Peace, peace, all things continue as they were from the beginning. Brethren, we are seeing signs, and we, as we see calamities in the land, and we know what, the, uh, what interest the devil has in calamities, that he also seeks worship, and that's why he will bring calamities, and will bring, bring misrepresentation, and will lead people to a path to to the to the to the to the wide to the to the wide path and we lead them and and we and we'll deceive them and many will be will be deluded enthusiasts and while we see all these things happening and we are seeing a, a regard for the blue laws we are seeing a call for the blue laws in the land and we know very well from sacred history that whenever calamities are that the devil uses calamities to push people to keep a spurious sabbath but while we see all these things the condition of the world of, of many in the world today the condition of many in the church today is as it was in the days of Noah. how was it we have we have read that in 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 Patrick's and prophet why by we we have read that what happened to them he says they cry peace peace all things continue as they were from the beginning. Let none be disturbed by the exciting message of this alarmist. Whoever will preach this will be said to be a crazed alarmist or a deluded enthusiast. He says, peace, peace. All things continue as they were from the beginning. Let none be disturbed by the exciting message of this alarmist. But this doctrine of the millennium does not harmonize with the teachings of Christ and his apostles. Jesus asked the significant question, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on earth? And it continues and says this, and, and as we have seen, he declares that the state of the world will be 
as in the days of Noah. Paul warns us that we may look for wickedness to increase as the end draws near. The Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to sedu seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. How will the devil push people to, to give heed to his doctrines? Number one, by also using calamities and, 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 and lies. He says, the apostle says that in the last days, perilous times shall come, and he gives a startling list of sins that will be found among those who have a form of godliness. Those who are a form of godliness, where are they found? In the church. He says, as the time of their probation was closing, the antediluvian gave themselves up to exciting amusements and festivities. He says, those who possessed influence and power were bent on keeping the minds of the people engrossed with mirth and pleasure. Those who possessed influence and power were bent on keeping the minds of people engrossed with mirth and pleasure, lest any should be impressed by the last solemn warning. Lest any should be impressed by the last solemn warning. Do we not see the same repeated in our day? While God's servants are giving the message that the end of all things at hand, the world is absorbed in amusements and pleasure seeking. There is a constant round of excitement that causes indifference to God and prevents the people from being impressed by the truths which alone can save them from the coming destruction. Read what we are, the foundation that we are laid. He says, in Noah's day, philosophers declared that it was impossible for the world to be destroyed by water. And even in this very day, uh, the learned are declaring, the wise are declaring, the great who don't have God are declaring that it is impossible for the impending conflict to come to fruition. But it continues and says this, it continues and, 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 and says this. Remember we have said the learned, the clergy who don't have Christ. There's a difference between the learned who have Christ and the learned who don't have Christ. There's a difference between the clergy who stand for God and the clergy who don't stand for God. He says here that in Noah's days, philosophers declared that it was impossible for the world to be, de to be destroyed by water. So now there are men of science who endeavor to show that the world cannot be destroyed by fire, that this will be inconsistent. But how do we know that we are approaching a time whereby the world will be destroyed by fire? By looking at the calamities, by looking at the love for the spirit of Sabbath, all these tend, are tending to the same direction that the world is almost reaching, its, the sins of the world are almost reaching the high heavens. He says that there are men of science who endeavor to show that the world cannot be destroyed by fire, that this will be inconsistent with the laws of nature. But the God of nature, the maker, the controller of our laws can cause the works of his hand to serve. Uh, he says that, but God of nature, the maker and controller of our laws can use the works of his hand to serve his own purpose. Then it continues and says this, Patrick's and Prophet, this is chapter 7, the flood. He says, when great and wise men had proved to their satisfaction that it was impossible for the world to be destroyed by water, when the fears of the people were, were uh, 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 let us take that again. He says, when great and wise men had proved to their satisfaction that it was impossible for the world to be destroyed by water, when the fears of the people were quieted, when, they, when, when all regarded Noah's prophecy as a delusion and looked upon him as a, fa, as a, as a fanatic, then it was God's time, then it was that God's time had come. And even today, while these messages of warning are being given that there's an impending conflict, those who give this message are looked upon as fanatics, as deluded uh, enthusiasts, as, as mere alarmists. But we are being told that as it was in the days of Noah, and we have just seen that as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the end. It says that fears of the people were, were quieted. Then it continues, when all regarded Noah's prophecy as a delusion and looked upon him as a fanatic, it was that God's time had come. The fountains of the great deep were broken up and the windows of heaven were opened and the scoffers were overwhelmed in the waters of the flood with all their boasted philosophy men found too late men found too late with all their boasted philosophy men found too late that their wisdom was foolishness that the law giver is greater than the laws of nature that omni and that omnipotence is no loss for means to accomplish his purposes. As it was the days of Noah, even thus shall it be in the days when the Son of Man is revealed. That is Luke 17, 26 and 30. We had read a part of that. It says, The day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also, and the works that are therein, shall be burned up. How do we know? We will know that that will happen when we see the signs foretold by the prophets. And what are some of these signs? There shall be trouble in the land. There shall be calamities. There shall be disasters. There shall be a spurious Sabbath that shall be uplifted. Do we see these things happening in the land? Yes, we see them. That great, great controversy... Uh, finishes by saying this. It finishes by saying uh, by saying this. Uh, 
not great controversy, Patrick's and Prophet, it finishes by saying this, that when the reasoning of philosophy had banished the fears of God's judgment, when religious teachers are, are pointing forward to long ages of peace and prosperity, and the world are absorbed in their rounds of business and pleasure, planting and building, feasting and merrymaking, rejecting God's warning and mocking his messengers, then it shall then it is that sudden destruction cometh upon them, and they shall not escape. He says again, Peace, please don't be caught in this condition. He says, when the reasoning of philosophy has banished the fear of God's judgment, when religious teachers are pointing forward to long ages of peace and prosperity, and the world are absorbed in their rounds of business and pleasure, planting and building, feasting and merrymaking, rejecting God's warning and mocking his messengers, then it is that sudden destruction cometh upon them, and they shall not escape. Brethren, do you want to escape? Give heed to the warnings that are found in the word of God. Give heed to the warnings that Christ gave, and we shall escape. Heavenly Father, we come before this evening. We thank you for being with us. We see the Sunday movement working its way, making its way in darkness and even in open. While some are hiding the true intentions of where this undercurrent is, ten, is tending, some are clueless, Heavenly Father. That's why we come unto you, Heavenly Father. We know very well that you have the true Sabbath, Heavenly Father, which is written in your word as clear as the sun, Heavenly Father. But we know the devil, because of the great controversy, he also seeks worship. He will bring calamities in the land and will point people to a spurious Sabbath, Heavenly Father, to an adulterous Sabbath, Heavenly Father, to an idol Sabbath, Heavenly Father. And this idol Sabbath is not written anywhere in your word, Heavenly Father. That's why we pray. As we see calamities, as we see the regard for an idol Sabbath, while some are doing it honestly, some know where this undercurrent is ten tending. A majority know that they cannot prove this from the word of God. We pray, Heavenly Father, that in this time of calamities, as they continue to increase in intensity, Heavenly Father, may we be reminded, Father God, where this undercurrent, where this, all this is standing, that it will lead to a time whereby your people shall be brought into close combat with the beast and his image. That's why we pray that may you open our eyes, return us to the foundations of the prophets and apostles, and let us design the signs of the times. But far and above all, let us be covered by your righteousness, for that is the greatest thing that can happen to us, Heavenly Father. All this we ask in the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen and amen. God bless you all. Let us read the words of the prophets.